Sabah sa all. We are now again in our next lesson. This is a wonderful lesson. I'd like to say to all of you, happy Sabbath. And before we begin discussing this lesson in just about 20 to 30 minutes, may I request each one of you to pray with me and for me. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we are so thankful that you've given us the time to come to you, to review your word. I am just your servant and all of us have this finite mind and we cannot fully comprehend without your Holy Spirit who will empower us to understand the things and the principles that we need to understand regarding the topic. Thank you, dear God, for answering our prayer and the forgiveness of our sins in Jesus' name. Amen. The topic this week until the Sabbath is very wonderful and there are a lot of things in here. It is to summarize the main points and apply the principles in our life today so we will be blessed by this lesson. Let me share to you my slide. And so now we have come to lesson nine for May 29, 2021. It's about covenant sign. What is the covenant sign, right? We need to understand, okay? Uh, we already talked about uh, the previous meetings about the covenant, and here God has given us covenant law, and now is the sign. Look, now the sign of God's covenant is no other than the Sabbath. The Sabbath is special. In many ways, okay? It is a reminder of creation. You know, Exodus 20, 11, which says, For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, and rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. That is a reference to Genesis 2, 1, 2, 3. All right? And that is very important, a reminder of creation. And there are three things that, we need to emphasize later on that he rested on the Sabbath day and he blessed and then he made it holy or sanctified it. Again, Sabbath is also a, a sign or a reminder of redemption. We see it in Deuteronomy 5.15 from NIRV. RV. Remember that you, have, you were slaves in Egypt. The Lord your God reached out his mighty hand and powerful arm and brought you out of there. So he has commanded you to observe the Sabbath day. You see that? And Sabbath also is a sign of the everlasting covenant and it will last forever. Now we read it in Isaiah 66, 22 and 23. We see in 23 here, CEV. From month to month and from Sabbath to Sabbath, all humanity will come to worship me, says the Lord. That is, in verse 22, the context, the immediate context says, in the new heavens and the new earth, where will you be that time? If all humanity will come to worship every week, every Sabbath, will you worship on Friday and uh, Sunday? You say, oh God, please, <laughs> accept me. I have my Friday worship. I have my, my Sabbath on Sunday. No, there's only one Sabbath on that weekly in the new heavens and the new earth. So at the same time, it is also one of the ritual laws that led to Christ. You see, we read it in Numbers 28, 9 and 10. On the Sabbath day, two male lambs a year old without blemish and two tenths of an ephah of fine flour for a grain offering mixed with oil and its drink offering. Verse 10, this is the burnt offering of every Sabbath. I want you to take note of this verse 10. Burnt offering of every Sabbath, because we will come back to it later on. Besides the regular burnt offering and its drink offering. In other words, there is bring, uh, a burnt offering of every Sabbath, besides other offering, because they actually we are going to understand the, the typology. It refers or typifies Christ, led to Christ. Now, the Sabbath goes beyond being a mere allotment of time. Now, we need to understand that concept. It is a promise of a rich and meaningful relationship with God. Not only that, I will emphasize later on, also with our family. It is a day we set aside everything in our lives except God. And, you know, we take time to strengthen our relationship with Him, of course, and with our family later on. I will emphasize that. And so in here, this week can be summarized and be outlined into this way, like the Sabbath in creation, we will talk about it. And then from creation to Sinai, what happened? What was the meaning of the Sabbath at the time? And again, from Sinai to our time, and we have this covenant sign and a sign of sanctification and a sign to remember. All right, let's go to the first one here. As we understand, 
the Sabbath in creation. Now we read in Genesis 2, 3. Then God blessed or blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because in it he rested from all his work which God had created and made. There are three things there that make a Sabbath very special. A Sabbath is a blessing that God blessed it. A Sabbath is a, a, a sign of sanctification. He sanctified it, means made it holy. But this is an intensive form of just make holy. Holy here means set aside for, uh, you know, set aside. But here, sanctification in an appeal form in Hebrew, it means sanctified or conscious. It means for a holy purpose. So it has an intensive meaning and more weight, more meaning. Because in it, he rested. All right? If you understand that the word sanctified means holy originally, kadash, okay? Holy, to be holy. It means the Sabbath is a holy day, even in creation. And at the same time, what, what is the word rested? If you work today and your boss will, will say to you, ah, there's no work on Wednesday. Oh, thank you, boss. It's a holiday. Holiday means uh, no work. All right? So basically, so in other words, Sabbath is a blessing because it is a holy day and a holiday. All right? Now, before you judge me what, what it means by holiday with the word meaning today, well, I rather want you to open your mind. It's not from me. It's from the text. And we derive it from the text. We call it exegesis. Later on, we will explore more than that. Now, how about the first parents, uh, the first family who kept the Sabbath? Look. In Genesis 4.3, there is here a connotation, an implied meaning, not so explicit. We, we read it even in the King James Version. There's a note in it like at the end of days. In Hebrew, we call it mikitz yamim, at the end of days. Now, during that time, monthly cycle was not known. All right? The, the cycle that was known that time at the end of days means at the end of the days of the week. That was the one meant because in here... You will see Genesis 4.3, as we read before in Numbers, right? 28, I think, 9 and 10, that on Sabbath, there's a special burnt offering. That is why here, uh, Cain and Abel made an offering to God, and they, as a sign of keeping the Sabbath, that is a not explicit and implied meaning that the first family actually, you know, kept the Sabbath, only to find out in here that Abel was killed by his brother Cain because of, you know, the story. He was not accepted by God because of his attitude, not because of the type of offering. Because his offering is, is not bloody, but actually the word uh, offering there is a general term, bloody and non-bloody. Well, I'll not go into it. It's a deeper meaning. I'm saying that the first family also kept the Sabbath. And not only that, later on, I will tell you. So uh, God created signs to determine specific time periods. The sun and the moon set the days and the years. Genesis 1.14, and the Sabbath set the, the, the week. So that is the one that we see in Genesis 4.3. It's a weekly cycle, Genesis 2.2. 2. Therefore, there are physical events that determine days and years. These events are repetitive and measurable. All right? And so in here, as we understand 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, I want you to understand rather the principle of the Sabbath rather than the letter of the law of the Sabbath. You know, The principle means the intention of the the author of the Sabbath, what was his intention? Why did he give the Sabbath? Look, however, weeks cannot be measured by physical phenomena. God established them and we are still measuring weeks like, like God did. Right? This is the idea of Sabbath as measured by time. God created the Sabbath as a sign for all humankind, not just for Israel. According to Mark 2, 27, the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. Look. Not only the first family observed the Sabbath. We understand here also that by implication again, Abraham in Genesis 26, 5, obeyed my voice, as my means God, and kept my charge and commandments, commandment, mitzvah, and one of them is Sabbath, my statutes and my laws. If Abraham only kept the nine commandments that he, God would not have said, he obeyed my voice and kept my, my commandments. Of course, he kept the commandments. Is it the Ten Commandments? We will understand later on. Was the Ten Commandments uh, uh, given before Sinai? We'll understand later on. Of course, as we understand this, right? Already by implication, because God even kept the Sabbath in here. 
And so that is why we need to understand God's law, not just from the letter of the law, okay? We call it, right? The letter of the law, or like uh, we call it, cas sometimes when, when you apply it, we like casuistic, the specific application according to situation, but you call it the, you understand the apodictic, the principle of the law, like the principle of law in Matthew 22, you know, 37 to 40, the law in it has the principle of love. So when we understand the, the principle behind the Sabbath, that it is actually in here, we will understand later on what, what Sabbath means. Then we understand the principle and we appreciate how we apply it, okay? Now let's talk about from creation to Sinai, all right? Now, we, it says in, in Exodus 16, 23, then he said to them, this is what the Lord has said, tomorrow is a Sabbath rest, okay? Look, rest here is the principle behind the Sabbath that it is actually rest. A holy Sabbath, not just rest, but a holy Sabbath to the Lord, all right? Not just any kind of physical rest or any kind of rest, but it is a kind of rest because there's a purpose. It is holy to God, devoted, consecrated to God. Bake what you will bake today and boil what you will boil and lay up for yourself all that remains and be kept until morning. Now, look, why did God command it to them? In Exodus 16, 23, the Ten Commandments was not still given to them. It was given in Exodus 20, right? As we know. So Exodus 16, 23 is an evidence that the law, actually the Sabbath law was already given. The Sabbath commandment was given even before Sinai in, in Exodus 20. That, that's why it was kept by, by Abraham by implication and even the first family of, of, of Adam. Now we look in here, look at in here, rest. Rest from what? In Exodus 29 to 10, rest from work. You need to understand that the word work here is melaka in Hebrew, meaning earning work. It's a business or occupation. It is not kind, any kind of work, uh, something like sabbatical work, like, you know, the, the priests during their time were, uh, were working so hard, you know, or, or labor of, of, of charity or love or healing. No, this kind of work is an earning work, not a charitable work. So that is why God commanded you bake everything here. Bake what you can bake today because that is earning Two times God uh, gave the double blessings on Friday. And in here, we will understand that one, uh, verse 10 later on. You will understand that six days, look, six days actually is working day. What is your working day? Only for Monday? In here, six days. And the seventh day is the Sabbath. Now, we understood already the Sabbath is the seventh day. Therefore, six days should be from first day. That is Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. If you are making Sunday a rest day or a holiday instead of a holiday, then actually you are or we are violating the principle of the Sabbath because we have to work six days a week. In other words, Sunday is not a holiday nor a holiday, all right? Sabbath is the only holiday, holiday and a holiday. Look at this verse 10 later on. We will come back to it. Look. In that moment, the people of Israel were grumbling about God because of hunger, the desert of sin. And they were not able to keep the Sabbath while being slaves in Egypt for how long? For 130 years. Very long time. In addition to giving them manna to eat, God also reminded them of the importance of resting on the Sabbath day. The resting is not just physical, emotional, but basically, basically it's physical labor. No work, no earning work. Resting on that day. So that is the meaning of the Sabbath. Basically, Shabbat is means to rest, okay? So the principle behind Sabbath is resting. If you are not resting on the Sabbath at the end of the day, well, you have to question. You have to think what kind of Sabbath observance you had on that day. Is it a restful Sabbath where you are not refreshed at the end of the Sabbath or not? Why? Because maybe you loaded yourself with a lot of activities that are not, uh, you know, in accordance with the principle of the Sabbath, even if they're religious ones, but they are no longer, you know, accord, uh, violating, but they are violating the principle of the Sabbath of resting, then you might think whether we are violating God's uh, principle of Sabbath keeping. In here, look, miraculously, the manna got maggoty, like it has a maggot, you know, some <laughs> worms the day after picking it up, but not, that is on the Sabbath day, right? But not on Sabbath, right? Uh, I mean, on Sabbath, it's, if, if yeah, it, there is no man on the Sabbath, right? But if you keep it, right? Uh, I mean, yeah, on the Sabbath, if you keep too much, it, the following day it will be it will be maggoty, a lot of maggots. Besides, manna did not come on Sabbath, right? 
So they gathered additional manna and cooked it on Friday. That is why Sabbath day is not an earning day. It is a resting day. Now, God wanted them to devote the Sabbath to be a communion with him. Exodus 16, 29. And a communion with their family. Leviticus 19, 3. Now, I want you to read it. He still wants to, wait, look, 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 look here. Leviticus 19.3, this is translation for translators. Each of you must respect your father and mother. And look at the word and, you know, uh, things in Hebrew parallelism, they are uh, connected with and, connect, you know, connecting conjunction and they mean the same thing or they share the same uh, meaning. And you must honor or treat respectfully the Sabbath days. By implication, we understand that the best way to keep the Sabbath holy is besides communion with God is communion with the family. That is why in verse 10, it's the whole family. You respect your father, your, your parents. Your son will respect your parents. Your daughter, your male servant will respect your parents. And they say, keep the Sabbath holy. And male servant, livestock, sojourner, what will they do? The whole Sabbath day, all right? As a family together, everybody is not working. What will they do? Just sleep? Just kind of, a, you know, <laughs> of course, it's a holiday and both a holiday for the whole family. But then again, be careful. It's not the type of holiday that we are celebrating today. Because the holiday today, actually the holiday is from the word holy day. But before 12th century, but after 12th century, if you look at the etymology and the history of holiday, the meaning changes. The word holiday is used by the British today to mean secession from cessation from work. It means no work, no holiday. But in American English, it means vacation. But vacation today has another meaning. It, it means that you can do anything, all right? Not, not controlled by anybody, not with God. You can do anything for vacation or travel. That is not the type of holiday that God wants us. The type of holiday that God wants us is, is it's a time with him and with a family that is in accordance to the principles of the Sabbath, not to be hedonistic, not to be wild, not to be uncontrolled. But again, it's a type of holiday which is holy. That is why in here, he still wants to spend the Sabbath with us today. All right, look, look. That's why the Sabbath is a blessing for families, all right? Did you notice that Jesus, you know, uh, really intentionally spent the Sabbath, not just inside or out indoor, but even outdoor. And it was not a mistake. It was not a, it was not a, a like an emergency. That's why the, the Jews, the, 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 the Pharisees, you know, and Sadducees, they were so angry. Hey, you have six days of a, in a week. Why would you heal that man on the Sabbath day? It means it was an intentional doing and healing on the Sabbath day. In other words, doing things on the Sabbath day, even intentionally for the purpose of saving lives and those other things, they're actually within the bounds of Sabbath keeping, especially activities that would promote, you know, strengthen their family, uh, it's a blessing to the family. Well, I want you to read the article of Dr. Uh, Jigo Sousa on that one. This is not my idea. He actually discovered it. And it's from the Bible. You see that? We derive it from the Bible, from the principles of the Bible. That is why in here, there are some ways that we can find how we make the Sabbath a delight. That Isaiah 58, that will guard us from making a Sabbath a, a worldly holiday. All right? But it should be a divine holiday, a biblical holiday, not a worldly holiday. That is why... I do not believe on, on, and I do not like to practice on the whole day. It's just within the church, you know, the whole day, six hours, eight hours, even meeting, church board until evening. Now, what happens when you go home? Oh, you are so flat. That is not according to the principles of the Sabbath. The Sabbath should be refreshing. That is why Mrs. White and even Jesus had a long walk. Mrs. White long, uh, had a long walk, even three hours walking in the afternoon. It's not always giving Bible study. Also for recreation for, for the family with God on the Sabbath day. Imagine she and her, her family had a long walk in the woods. So long walk. Really, you would sweat. I don't know if it was done on, on winter. But the idea in here, that the Sabbath is both a holiday, a holy day. A holy day and a holiday, but that is a divine holiday, right? If it is new to you, <laughs> I want you to explore more about the biblical principles behind. Not just letter for letter when we read the Bible. And also with the Holy Spirit, keep on uh, thinking and uh, researching on the principles of, of God's laws rather than on the letter of the law. Like letter of the law is more on the policies, more on the, I'm not saying that we neglect the policies. I'm saying it, the policies and, and the rules 
and those uh, lower level of, of laws should be in accordance to the principle of the law, not pharisaical, you know? If we emphasize more on those specific things over the principles of the law, we become like a Pharisee. So understand the principles of the Sabbath. I hope it's clear. We don't have enough time for that. Look, in here, uh, covenant sign. Therefore, the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath, okay? <laughs> if you're going to insert not just by letter of the law weekly from 24 hours, but even the principle behind it. To observe the Sabbath throughout your generation as a spiritual covenant, it is not just one-time event. Perpetual means everlasting according to Exodus 31, 16. So four times in the Bible, the Sabbath is designated as a sign. Exodus 30, 31, 13 is a sign what? To remind us that God sanctifies us. We go through the process of sanctification. That means living a holy life with God. Without that Sabbath, oh, we would be not reminded and we would do other things. And we will forget that God, we will forget that God is <laughs> our Lord. That's why coming to uh, and observing the Sabbath, coming to church and doing activities on the Sabbath and uh, keeping the Sabbath holy is a sign that we can uh, remind the, be reminded that God is our God. Exodus 31, 17, to remind us that God is our creator. What a wonderful thing, right? Uh, and Ezekiel 20, 12, to remind us that God sanctifies us again. You see that? A sign of sanctification. So that, verse 20, we may know God. In other words, we may tend to forget God if we don't keep the Sabbath. Well, we might say, well, I don't keep the Sabbath, but I keep God in my mind, in my heart. No, <laughs> action will show. Actions will speak louder than words. And, you know, God said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Jesus said in a, John 14, 15, it means a natural keeping of God's commandments. The Sabbath is an external sign that marks us as participants of the everlasting covenant. Now, we are the second party of God's covenant. God keeps his covenant. We are to keep our covenant of love or from the principle of love. By dedicating a special day to God and the day he designated, we acknowledge that we have accepted his covenant, that we want to know him better every day. Wonderful. And that we want to be more like him, all right? There is something we look forward to every end of the week, not just at the end of the week, but even the beginning of the week, and that is Sabbath. The Sabbath is also a sign of God's grace. It is a reminder of Jesus' work of redemption in our favor. Now, we read it in Deuteronomy 5, 13 to 15. There's a lot more. I'm running out of time. I would rather emphasize more a bit of a sign of sanctification. According to Exodus 31, 13, surely my Sabbath you shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generation, and that you may know that I am the Lord you get who sanctifies you. That is why it's very easy and uh, please take note that the Sabbath here will not save us. Keeping the Sabbath will not save us. We keep the Sabbath because we live a holy life because we have been saved already. We've been justified already. God's righteousness is credited to us already. So in two, the four times the Sabbath is introduced as a sign, it is mentioned that God wants us to know that he sanctifies us. Wonderful thing, right? That's why I love the Sabbath. To know God means more than just intellectual knowledge. It involves a close relationship with him. His relationship is specially strengthened thanks to our communion with him during the Sabbath, right? Now, knowing the Lord involves serving him, okay, and fearing him, believing in him, trusting him, and seeking him, all right? God can sanctify us through this close relationship with him. Now, here, again, a sign to remember. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy here. Exodus 20, verse 8. Eight, actually, another translation of B, BSV, remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. By, yeah, actually, the word keep is not in the Hebrew word. It's just like this in y y YLT. Remember the Sabbath day to be holy, just like that. It means when you remember the Sabbath day here, in the times before, for 430 years, they forgot the Sabbath. And so it is God's way that they would keep the Sabbath holy and they would again remember God. All right? Now, this is the only here uh, part of the law in which we are to remember. Maybe God is saying we are forgetful. Originally, they forgot God for more than 400 years. And for us today, if we do not keep, well, how many of us remember or keep the, or forget the Sabbath? If we forget, then we have to confess to God, oh God, I'm sorry. We forgot the principle of the Sabbath and how it is to be observed, how it is to be kept holy. All right? And so in here, there are three things we must do with the Sabbath to remember. What? To keep it holy, although it's not in the Hebrew word, but in other texts, you will see that shamar, keep, is also in other verses in the Bible. And to keep it holy, to keep it and keep it holy in, in, in these verses. 
they cover three aspects of time, all right? The past, the present, and the future. What is about the past? The Sabbath reminds us of creation. What is the present? We enjoy a special moment of communion with God and keeping it and with our family. Future, God is uh, sanctifying us to prepare us for an eternity with him. That is why in eternity, in Isaiah 66, 22, 23, we will be keeping the Sabbath with God. What a wonderful topic, you know. We should know uh, the principle. If the whole world knows about the principle of the Sabbath, that is both a holy day and a holiday, and, and it, it, we need it to remember God because we are not our own. He, we are His. Then we are to understand that the Sabbath is a seal, a sign of identity, you know. Like you have a covenant with your wife. There is a seal, an identity, right? It contains the elements that, uh, that identify its creator. It, it Elements that you are identified with your spouse. Now, example here, who is signing God, his realm, heavens and earth, and the date of the signature, that is creation, heavens and the earth, right? Now, we are running out of time. This is just a review, short review. Let's uh, finish this with this quotation from uh, the Testimonies of the Church, uh, Book 6, uh, Chapter 44, Page 349. Great blessings are enfolded in the observance of the Sabbath. And God decides that the Sabbath day shall be to us a day of joy. That I told you, when it is a day of joy, it should be a holiday, a holy day, and a holiday. A day of joy. It's a divine joy, you know, religious joy, not a worldly joy. There was a joy at the institution of the Sabbath. Well, if you keep, if you see yourself sleeping at the church because it's been eight hours already, is it a joy? That is why. We need to, I believe so, by implication, by according to the principle of the Sabbath, we need to vary our activities indoor and outdoor, like Jesus did, like Mrs. White did, like the early Christians did. There was a joy at the institution of the Sabbath. God looked with satisfaction upon the work of his hands. All things that he had made, he pronounced very good in Genesis 1.31. Heaven and earth were filled with rejoicing. Our heavenly Father desires through it the observance of the Sabbath to preserve among men a knowledge of himself. He desires that the Sabbath shall direct our minds to him as the true and living God, and that through knowing him, we may have life and peace. Well, I hope, I wish you had more time to discuss with me right here online, but then our uh, platform right now online does not allow us to have that discussion. This is only a review. And then let us thank God and uh, pray. But dear God, we thank you so much, O oh Lord God, of the principles of the Sabbath. It is embedded in the law that it is a sign of the covenant that you are God and we are your people. And that we love you. We love each other. You being the first party and we are the second party. And so we are to keep the Sabbath so we remember our loving covenantal relationship with you Lord, from eternity to eternity. Because we will be celebrating and keeping the Sabbath with you in the new heavens and the new earth. I pray for anybody who has not known yet the principle of the Sabbath, that it is actually needed by each one physically, emotionally, and especially spiritually to prepare each one for your coming, and we will be able to live with you forever and ever as you promised. Thank you, dear, dear Lord, for blessing all the listeners at this time. All we ask in the wonderful name of Jesus with the forgiveness of our sins. Amen. Amen. See you next time, brothers and sisters. Again, happy Sabbath to all.